ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وبعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد Surely all praise and glory is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise him, we seek his forgiveness, we ask him for his mercy. We testify and we state with firmness and conviction that none is worthy of worship but Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his worshipping slave and final messenger. Ahibbati fillah, those who we love in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I remind myself and you consistently and constantly of the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he invites us. At the same time, admonishes us by saying, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. O you who have chosen faith, O you who have come into faith, ittaqullah. Be mindful and conscious and aware, and aware of the dealings you have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Haqqa tuqafi. To the measure and the capacity that he is deserving of you. Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. And ensure that you do not depart from this worldly life in any state other than willful, voluntary submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is Islam. After the month of Ramadan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a'adahu allahu alayna bil khayri wal man. May Allah return it to us year after year in goodness and in health. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our deeds in it. There is always a peak. And following the peak, Sadly, for many of us, there is a spiritual freefall. And there is a time where our joy in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَبِيَقْرَحُ Our joy in celebration at the day of Eid is to the mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in the month of Ramadan. To the mercy that we emancipate ourselves by our actions and our dealings with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hoping for His mercy and seeking His path. And the month of Ramadan, as it enters upon us, there is an increase in our ibadah. And as our ulama have taught us, as our ibadah and ta'ah increases, so does our iman. And therefore, the moment you invite people to your home and share food with others, and you perform ita'am al ta'am and you're charitable with your wealth, and you free up some of your time for ijtihad bil Qur'an, and you stand into the hours of night in prayer, and you put your forehead onto the floor more often than not, than in the other months of the year, your iman increases. And the moment those opportunities which are established in our life by a dictate from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala iktataba, Alayna, he wrote it upon us. The moment it departs, you feel as well with the departure of Ramadan that there is a recovery period. But it is a recovery period that we do not seek. And sometimes for us as believers, we recover our old traits and recover our old mannerisms that the essence of Ramadan seeks to stamp out. My dear brothers and sisters, in the month of Ramadan, I gave the khutbah about seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and wanting to have the optimism of a believer, having a certainty of faith in Allah. And as Ramadan has closed and we find ourselves halfway through the month of Shawwal, approximately halfway, we begin to recount what we have done in the last 15 days in hopes of capturing that spirit of taqwa that we built in the month of Ramadan. Allah tells us in the Quran in no uncertain terms, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Perhaps, by chance, if you're lucky, maybe, if providence and grace has been given to you, the month of Ramadan will end and your taqwa has increased. 
And as the month of Ramadan departs, we begin to ask ourselves self-critical questions about our spiritual development and in our nearness to Allah. I ask you, and don't answer me, but answer in your heart, and answer that is before Allah and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Those of us who were engaged in Qiyam and stood in the night before Allah listening to the Qur'an recited by others or leading others, have we continued even a tenth of the amount? Those of us who had opened our homes for others to eat and enjoy from our food and our sadaqah, have we continued after the month of Ramadan? Those who had made silah, silatul rahim, we have relatives and neighbors that we called on the phone for Eid, that we joyed, enjoyed the, the days of celebration, although distant from us. Have we continued that tradition of drawing closer to Allah? Those of us who had mended broken relationships, there was hostility between you and another, and you fixed it by the barakah and the blessing of the month of Ramadan. Has it gone back to how it was? Have you made greater attempts to rectify the situations of pollution in our lives? Those of us who had turned our eyes away from television and from silly series and shows that we are unnecessarily wasting time in front of, have we picked up the remote control and have opened it back into our access? Those whose ears were filled with the Qur'an as they drove to work and on their MP3 players and on their iPhones, has that tradition come to an end with the passing of the month of Ramadan? Those of us whose iman raised and rose and rose with ta'a, has it been depleted by the lack of ta'a or worse by the addition of ma'siyah, the addition of sin? So there is a recovery after the month of Ramadan. As you increase, there invariably comes a moment where you will decrease. And therefore the imams, they tell us, an iman yazidu bi ta'a wa yanqusu bin ma'siyah. Just like as it rises with obedience to Allah, our iman plummets. And this is not something that you and I are to worry only about. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as is narrated in Sahih al-Jami'ah, wa al-Hadith al-Sahih, he says, إِنَّ الْإِيمَانَ لَيَبْلَى فِي جَوْفِ أَحَدِكُمْ Iman, this faith of ours, becomes worn out, tarnished, just like your clothing. If you wear a shirt too much, wash it too much, put it on again, wash it again, put it on again, the fabric dulls, its beauty is lost, its tears become apparent, its color is not vibrant. لَيَبْلَى فِي جَوْفِ أَحَدِكُمْ كَمَا يَبْلَى الثَّوْبِ فَسَلُوا اللَّهَ أَنْ يُجَدِّدَ الْإِيمَانَ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ So continuously ask Allah to restart, reignite, re-establish Iman where? In your heart. فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ The Prophet ﷺ doesn't say فِي أَعْمَالِكُمْ In your deeds. It has to start, يَا عَبْدَ اللَّهِ يَا أَمَّةَ اللَّهِ In your heart. The heart is where the intention is. And therefore, Imam al-Ghazali or Imam al-Shafi'i qablahu, they would say, the one who is not consistent in salah, he's not consistent because he doesn't have niyyah. And niyyah, إِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ amal. If your intention is not to be a better Muslim, how can you be a better Muslim? If your intention is not to stay away from haram, how can you expect to stay away from haram? If your intention isn't to wake up for fajr, how are you going to wake up? Aniyyah, the heart, the place that if it is pure, you become pure. وَإِذَا فَسَدْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ And if it's impure and tarnished and corrupt, the rest of you tarnish, rusts and becomes corrupt. It's the place that Allah warns you of over and over in the Qur'an. كَلَّا بَرْوَانَ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِ No, how can they have the faith? How can they come to believe? When on their heart is a covering of rust. في قلوبهم مرض. In their hearts of these people, there is a sickness. Allah describes the nations who came before us. فَلَمَّا زَاغُوا أَزَاغَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ When they left what they knew they should practice. When the things you and I know are essentials of our faith, we overlook it. 
when you no longer hate in your heart that you missed your prayer, when you don't feel bad that you witnessed haram with your eyes, when your skin doesn't hurt and itch at the thought that you have engaged in something sinful, when you don't feel regret, nadam, their heart doesn't feel it. The Prophet says, كَمَا رَوَى الْإِمَامِ الْبُخَارِيُّ وَمُسْلِمِ مَنْ رَأَى مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا The one who sees something wrong and it's in his means, his ability to change it. فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ Change it with your hand. I'm the president, I'm the leader, I'm the person, I'm the teacher, I'm the father, I'm the mother, I'm the husband. Change it. And لَمْ يَسْطَطِعْ I can't. Lisan, speak. I can't. I can't say anything. What does he have to have in his heart? He has to hate that it's done. How many of us, Ya Ibad Allah, hate the munkar when we see it? Or is it just something that's become second nature? It's okay. Everyone's happy with it. Who am I to say no? If it feels good, it has to be right. If so many people do it, it's got to be the right thing. So we as believers have a criterion, Furqan, an ability to judge right and wrong, which is the word of Allah and the tradition and sunnah of his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And therefore that Furqan is established in your heart. It is that you forsake those who lead you away from Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Furqan, in the chapter called Al-Furqan, that people on the day of judgment will say, Ya wayleta, how wretched am I today? Oh my regret. Ya wayleta, laytan istakhaztu ma'ar rasooli sabina. I wish I walked with the Prophet. Laytani lam attakhiz fulalan qalila. I wish I left this person and not made him my best friend. I wish I walked that way instead of this way. I wish I chose a time other than that time. I wish I turned this sin off if it's in my hand. I wish I changed my phone if I'm viewing sinful things on it. I wish I changed my friends, my place, my tutorial, my lecture time to abstain from what I know is calling me away from Allah. Ya wayleta. Ya abdullahimu ala yaday. Allah describes that moment. Where a person will bite onto his hand. Ya wayleta, I regret. And the month of Ramadan intends to wake you to the normal activities in your life that are abnormal. There are abnormal activities in our life that are not a part of your life. And should never be a part of your life. And the month of Ramadan is to open your eyes. And to open your heart. Because there are eyes that see but are blind. And ears that hear but are deaf. إِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَ الْأَبْصَارِ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَ الْقُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ It's not that they are blind by their eyes, but their hearts cannot perceive and see the truth. So the recovery after the month of Ramadan, my dear brothers and sisters, requires practical changes in our life. My topic with you after that short introduction is to get real with ourselves, myself and yourself. I speak to myself and my family and you, you and your family. And to you and the people who are from you, who are not here with us. There are those who are not with us today that you can share it. Just three things. Three simple things taught to us by the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Three things that when we look into the life of the Sahaba, we see as being present in all of them, consistently in their behavior and in their statement. The first of it, my dear brothers, is that your constitution, your way of viewing the world, the laws that abide in your heart and in your dealings, is سَمِعَنَا وَأَطَعْنَا. 